Submarines, one of the most recognizable and well-known class of warships found in modern fleets. Over the history of modern naval warfare, the submarine has been one of the most technologically advanced machines employed by worldwide navies. The ability to sneak past your enemy without them having the slightest idea of your presence has made these vessels dominate the seas from as early as the First World War. As with any weapon, there have been countless attempts to modify the design to make them even more capable or to allow them to conform to established doctrines. Many of these attempts created vessels that were unique, complete failures, or just outright bizarre. One particular design that ticks all these boxes is the M-Class submarine built for the Royal Navy, and today we will be looking at this relatively unknown class of underwater battleships. From ancient times, mankind has yearned to master the seas both for trade and for warfare. As centuries passed, we learned and adapted our seafaring vessels to be stronger and more well-equipped to face off against anything they could encounter. From the ships of the line during the Age of Sail to modern nuclear submarines, this is Sails and Salvos. Today's episode of Sails and Salvos is brought to you by NordVPN. We all know the story of the famous German Enigma machines from the Second World War which were used to create coded messages to prevent Allied interception. If this was being done almost 100 years ago, why would you not be using a VPN to encrypt your data in 2021? Unlike those early methods which were eventually cracked by the Allies, NordVPN now uses next-generation VPN tunneling as well as offering the ability to use a double VPN for a second level of encryption. This means your data is safer, all while maintaining high speeds for streaming and gaming. I've been using Nord for a while now, and not only is it far faster than my previous VPN, but it can actually be faster than my normal internet speed without a VPN at times. With over 5100 servers in 60 countries, you can use Nord just about anywhere with blazing fast speeds or swap your server location to access region lock content. For example, back to our earlier World War II U-boat topic, maybe you want to watch the original Das Boot miniseries, but it's not available in your location. With one click, I now have my location set to Berlin and voila, ready to watch. Check out my link down in the description or use code KONAVARK for an additional month for free with a two-year plan as well as a special Cyber Month deal. Thanks to them for sponsoring the video, now let's dive into today's topic. Holding the title of the world's largest navy for centuries prior to the Cold War, the Royal Navy has seen its share of naval projects that have resulted in strange designs. Some were successful, such as the case of the HMS Dreadnought, and some were less than successful, such as the HMS Captain. The M-Class's development rose out of the relative failure of the K-Class fleet submarines. The K-Class, also known as the Calamity Class by its crews, was designed as a class of subs that would be capable of speeds equal to fleets at the time, primarily Dreadnoughts. With this goal in mind, these ships were built with steam engines. Yes, you heard that right, steam engines in a submarine. Although the class had supporters in the form of Inspector Captain of Submarines Commodore Roger Caius and Admiral John Jellicoe and David Beatty, it had one major opponent in the form of Admiral Jackie Fisher who stated the most fatal error imaginable would be to put steam engines in submarines. Despite the potential problems, the K-Class was greenlit. These boats were massive, 103 meters in length, with a beam of 8.08 .08 meters, causing significant control and depth keeping problems. Two interesting problems with the boats were that their internal bulkheads were only capable of surviving a pressure equal to 21 meters, so if there was a hull breach at anything lower than this depth, then the bulkheads would collapse. The second problem is related to the length of the ship, which is 103 meters, or 339 feet. As we all know, submarines are intended to be submersible. The K-Class, however, would have a significant problem in that if it descended at a 30 degree angle, then the bow would nearly reach maximum safe depth while the stern would almost breach the surface. We'll likely resurface to cover the K-Class in more depth in the future, but for now I think it's safe to say it's understandable why only 17 of the planned 21 were built. The M-Class was ordered in place of the remaining four K-Class units, with three of them eventually being completed. M-1 was completed sometime in 1917, being remodeled from K-18. M-2 and M-3 were completed in 1920, with M-4 being scrapped prior to completion. Despite being built from the previous class of submarine, the M-Class had something quite unique. 
When looking at the M-Class, it's hard to miss one feature that sets this design apart from its peers. What you are looking at is an Armstrong Whitworth 12-inch naval gun on a submarine. These guns were actually spares from the formidable class pre-Dreadnought battleship, which gave the M-Class the distinction of being the only submarines to have the armament of a battleship. The idea to equip these submarines like this originated from the Royal Navy expecting that Germany would create a class armed with guns that would leave the British ships in their wake. Although this did happen with the arming of multiple U-boats with 15 centimeter guns, the creation of the M-Class easily gave the Royal Navy the most powerful submarine class in the world in terms of armament. With this armament in mind, these submarines originally were going to be used as shore bombardment vessels alongside merchant raiding, but this was changed. This is understandable as one large caliber gun would not be entirely effective for shore bombardment. This is especially true of one which was essentially fixed in mounting. Instead, it was decided that the subs would use the gun to engage merchant vessels. This does beg the question of why would you use a gun to do this when you could use the torpedo armament most submarines are known for? Normally, you would be correct in this question, but this is not World War II. Submarine torpedoes were not as reliable as those you may be familiar with from classes such as the Type 7 U-boat or Gato. In World War I, torpedoes were known to be unreliable when engaging a moving ship at more than 900 meters. Commodore Sidney S. Hall once stated, No case is known of a ship of war being torpedoed when underway at a range outside 1,000 yards. On the other hand, a 12-inch gun once on target would almost guarantee that a merchant ship would not survive assuming the shell hit. The one problem with this plan is that the shot had to neutralize the target in the first shot, as the gun could only be loaded when the sub surfaced. With this, you may be wondering why future submarines were not built with such massive armament. That's quite simple, as the M-Class had its fair share of issues in the field. The HMS M1, lead ship of the class, acted as the trial run of the concept, showing multiple problems with the overall design. The first major problem was that the effectiveness of a single 12-inch shell from a submarine in reliably sinking a merchant ship was not actually trialed, so there was no guarantee that this would actually happen as expected by her designers. In addition, as mentioned before, the gun could only reload when the ship surfaced and took three or more minutes to complete the reload. If the M1 had fired and missed the target, then she would have to expose herself to reload or would be forced to attempt a torpedo attack on the target. Another problem with the gun was that the breech mechanism was exposed to the sea, which caused leaks, and such leaking caused severe damage to the muzzle of the gun when it was fired. As mentioned though, these subs did still contain torpedoes with M1 and M2 having 18 inch tubes and M3 and M4 having 21 inch tubes causing the overall length to increase by 3 meters. Despite these problems, the M-Class was not entirely a class with as many ailments as their predecessors. Ditching the steam engines for diesels alone already put them ahead in terms of technology. These ships were reported to handle well underway and could dive in a respectable 90 seconds. In addition, they perfected a firing pattern called the dip chick procedure. The sub would approach the surface until the muzzle reached near 6 feet out of the water. Then, the muzzle would be opened and the gun would be fired, then the ship would submerge again. With this procedure, the ship was only exposed from 35 to 75 seconds. For a submarine of her size and time, this is quite respectable. The ships were also well liked by the crews, who praised the diving ability as well as how easy to handle they were. However, the novel M-Class was not to have a significant legacy. In 1925, on routine exercises in the English Channel, HMS M1 collided with the Swedish ship Vidar and sank with all 69 hands. In the collision, the gun and its entire housing were ripped off the submarine and caused the interior to be flooded. Apparently, the impact was so slight that the captain of the Vidar was unaware of the impact when it occurred. The M1's wreck was discovered in 1999 at a depth of 73 meters. Ironically, despite being built for the sole purpose of one-upping the German U-boats in terms of armament, this same factor would prevent M1 from ever seeing combat despite being ready during the war. Fears of the Germans building a submarine with an even bigger gun, although definitely possible knowing Germany, essentially dry docked the M-Class. HMS M2 and M3 had their guns removed in response to the Washington Naval Treaty which restricted the size of the guns on a submarine to under 8 inches. M2 would be converted to a seaplane carrier with her gun turret becoming a watertight hangar in 1925. 
She was lost in 1932 off the Chesil Beach in Dorset, and it is believed that the hangar door was opened prematurely and caused flooding of the ship. M3 would be the only ship of the class to not sink, and it was converted to a mine layer in 1927. Unfortunately for M3, she was only to be used as a test ship to assess the equipment for the Grampus class of mine-laying submarines. After trials had been completed, she was scrapped in 1932. Despite being liked by their crews, two of the three submarines would end up taking their crews with them to a watery grave. The M-Class of Submarines was an exceptionally unique take on the doctrine of submarine warfare, arming the ships with a gun caliber only found on the mightiest class of warship of the day, the Dreadnought Battleship. She was a product of some of the Royal Navy's most experienced commanders of the time, and a result of a combination of multiple different ideas on what a submarine should be able to do at sea. While the M-Class was theoretically the most powerful submarine ever built in terms of armament until the Cold War, they would not be the designs to inspire future submarines. As such, we can only look back and imagine what could have been had these ships been successful. Still, these submersible battleships live on in the pages of history as a strange solution to technological limitations. As this video has been very focused on vessels prowling above and below the waves of our oceans, it seems only right that I add on a small mention to the current Team Seas fundraiser. I'm sure you've heard of it from one of the countless YouTubers who have joined in to raise awareness of this effort, but if not, I'll quickly explain it. Similar to the Team Trees effort, every dollar donated will mean one pound of trash is removed from our oceans. Their goal is $30 million to remove 30 million pounds, with each pound being verified before payment is given. You can read more on their site, which I'll link below. I'll personally be donating $305, or the millimeter equivalent of the 12-inch guns mounted to the M-Class submarines. Regardless of if you choose to donate or not, I hope you did enjoy today's video. Thanks as always to my YouTube members who continue to support the channel, as well as NordVPN for sponsoring this video. Remember to use that link in the description or the code CONAVARC for an additional month on a two-year plan. I'll see you all in the next video.